What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about PlayStation VR, how it's selling, what was expected and projected versus reality. Now I bought the PlayStation VR because it's something I've wanted my whole life. I got it a few weeks ago. I've really been enjoying it. Is it the most incredible thing I've ever done in my life? No, it's one of the most incredible things I've ever done. Look guys, it's an unreal feeling to put on a headset and automatically be transported someplace else. To hear things and see things in a way that you've just never done before. It's really, really incredible. But the PlayStation VR sales are not as high as Sony first projected them to be. Sony expected, uh, I think, two over 2 million sales within the first year of PlayStation VR. And it doesn't look like it's going to hit that, that plateau. I think it's going to do just fine. But I'll drop a link in the description. Analyst, PlayStation VR sales were less than expected in 2016. Gaming industry research firm Superdata lowers its 2016 sales expectations for Sony's PlayStation VR headset from 2.6 million units sold to less than 750,000. Coming into 2016, many analysts predicted virtual reality would be one of the biggest trendsetters in the gaming industry. Thanks to the launch of devices like Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, and more recently the PlayStation VR. However, research firm Superdata has now changed its tune indicating that virtual reality products didn't meet the sales expectations this year, with Sony's PlayStation VR headset reportedly the biggest disappointment. Superdata originally had 2016 sales for the PlayStation VR pegged at 2.6 million, presumably expecting a boost from the recent Black Friday holiday shopping weekend. However, such a boost apparently didn't occur, as Superdata is now expecting PlayStation VR to sell less than 750,000 total units by the time 2016 comes to a close. Some may be wondering why PlayStation VR is not meeting sales expectations despite a strong start and launch, and Superdata has provided a couple of different explanations. Firstly, Superdata blames a quote, fragmented title lineup, end quote, on PlayStation VR's less than expected sales, which could mean a number of things. For example, some games are VR exclusive, whereas others are playable without the need of the headset. Other VR games are only available on the PlayStation Store instead of at brick and mortar locations, which limits their visibility to potential customers. It also doesn't help that the bulk of the device's launch lineup was met with lukewarm critical reception, with only a few standout titles like Res Infinite and Batman Arkham VR. Even the more highly regarded PSVR games seem to suffer from a common issue though, and that's a short length. Batman Arkham VR can be beaten in an hour or less, which may make some question whether or not it's worth buying, even at a budget price of $20. All these software issues contribute to PlayStation VR's quote, fragmented title lineup, end quote. And it's easy to see why Superdata believes this to be one of the primary factors bringing down the device's sales. The second reason provided by Superdata points to Sony's poor marketing of the headset, choosing to push PlayStation 4 Pro this holiday season instead of PlayStation VR. Superdata believes this sends a message to consumers that they should purchase a PS4 Pro first and worry about buying a PlayStation VR headset later, translating to weak sales for the device over the Black Friday shopping weekend. While PlayStation VR sales are lower than expected, it doesn't mean that things won't turn around for it and the virtual reality market in general next year. As prices for the hardware begin to lower, consumers will be more likely to purchase a VR headset. And if developers continue to create compelling VR experiences, it's only a matter of time until VR headsets like the PlayStation VR become adopted on a much wider basis. I 100% agree. Now, okay, so I agree with pretty much everything in this article. Uh, I do believe that PlayStation VR's sales will definitely pick up. It, they have such a huge advantage over all competition. There's over 40, PS, 40 million PS4s out there. So there's tons and tons of people who have it, people who are vying for it, people who want it, probably can't afford it just yet, they're going to wait for you know the sec second generation of PlayStation VR to come, it's going to drop to $299, everybody's going to buy it then, I mean, it's going to happen. But they're totally right, a lot of these games are really not AAA experiences. They're fun, they're different, do they change things for you? They definitely do. Your whole paradigm shifts when you put on the VR headset and you step into a world. You know, I'm, pl I'm playing Brookhaven on PlayStation VR. When you put it on, you're in this world. You stand around and in 360 degree, there's things coming at you, you shoot them. It feels so different, you know? When you play Batman Arkham VR, of course it's a short game. I took that game to work. I let someone play it in my office and he beat the game. <laughs> I sat there and watched someone who basically was just trying it out. He ended up beating the entire game. So it lets you know that these are really short experiences. Are they great experiences? Yes, some of them, some of them. 
Until Dawn, Rush of Blood is the best game on PlayStation VR, if you ask me. That's my favorite experience so far. It just feels really good. It's a longer experience. It's about a three and a half hour experience. It's a, it's a pretty good game. But until they create games and they get companies like Rockstar and Naughty Dog actually making games for PlayStation VR, it is going to you know, kind of fall back into that do I need it category. They need to have really talented developers making AAA games for this that are only on VR. You know, we haven't seen that yet. We need to get, you know, a great EA game, a, a great Ubisoft game, a, a, a great Rockstar game, a great Naughty Dog game, right? Uh, we need to get some great Microsoft talent working on VR for whenever VR comes to the Xbox Scorpio. But right now, I 100% agree with this. I think the PlayStation VR will continue to sell. They're projecting 750000 uh, by the end of the year. Hmm, that might be, it might be right. It's close to a million. I'd take a million. It's only been out for a couple of months by the end of the year. So that's still very successful for a $400 piece of hardware. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think that VR is a fad? Do you think it's going to go away? Do you think it's the future? And it is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what I think it is. I think VR is definitely the future. I'm really excited to see what developers are able to pull out of this out of this hardware in the coming months and years. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give a thumbs up and show support for the channel. Join the Facebook group. Follow me on Twitter. And you can support my channel and support my efforts by supporting me at BeastlyGamer.com. I'm the Beastly Gamer. I'll see you guys next time.